Welcome to the Sterling ESOP update. We're recording this webinar, so to minimize the background noise, we've kept participants muted during the presentation. But we really want you to be able to ask your questions, so I encourage you to write down your questions during the presentation and write them in the chat box. The chat box appears in the webinar controls, which generally shows up on the right-hand side of your screen. At the end of the presentation, we'll verbally answer the written questions from the chat box and unmute the phones and to collect any additional questions you would like to ask. At that time, if you would like to mute your own phone, be ready to put your phone on mute. The recorded version of this webinar, along with the recorded ESOP meetings from previous years, will be posted on our ESOP Connection website. The webinar will begin now. Good afternoon. My name is Rama Kowalowskas. I'm the president of Sterling. On behalf of the entire executive team, I'm very excited that you could all join us. I appreciate you taking the time from your busy schedule so we could share with you the success of Sterling due to the results of your dedicated hard work. This afternoon, I will present a quick overview of Sterling and the company's 2018 financial performance, current past stock value, and review the strategic plan for growth. Kathy Ivancy will review the ESOP plan and provisions, as well as what drove the 2018 change in the value of the stock. For those who are new to Sterling team, I believe it is important that I provide some history and a quick overview of the company. In August 1969, Sterling Engineering was founded by Dan Casey with a commitment to provide clients with exceptional engineering services. This month is the beginning of celebrating Sterling's 50th year anniversary. Sterling was bent on three major principles, respect for clients, commitment to quality, and respect for employees. To preserve this legacy, in 2013, Dan Casey decided to sell Sterling staffing to all of you, the employees. This meant all employees who helped to continue to build the business would be rewarded through equity ownership. Today, Sterling Staffing is recognized as one of the largest Midwest workforce solution providers with over 500 employees, which is complemented by our sister company, Sterling Engineering, which is known for its expertise in design, engineering, and project management services. Our headquarter office is in Westchester, Illinois, with a branch office in Brookfield, Wisconsin. Our experience and success in supporting large-scale projects has given us exposure not only nationally, but also globally. The next slide provides details of the 26 different states where Sterling employees work. As you can see, we have presence from the west to the east coast with domination in the Midwest. Sterling staff has also been involved in projects in 16 different countries. Most recently, we've expanded internationally to support customers in Aruba, Japan, and Hong Kong. We take pride in 2018 that Sterling Staffing was awarded the Best of Staffing Award by a third-party company called Clearly Rated. This past year, Sterling received the Diamond Five-Year Award for Employee Satisfaction. Fewer than 1% of staffing agencies in the U.S. and Canada earn a Diamond Distinction Award. Dan Casey, the founder of Sterling, always said that working for Sterling is just not another assignment or a temporary job. It's truly a career. Today, this is evident by the many employees who have worked for Sterling for multiple years. Currently, there are more than 25 employees who've worked for Sterling for over 10 years and over 50 employees over five years. Congratulations to all of you. Last year, Sterling had an employee who retired after 45 years. He worked for five clients. Throughout this time period, he only experienced a few weeks of gap in employment throughout his career at Sterling. While working for Sterling, this employee was able to provide not only financial security for his family, but also receive benefits which included true group health insurance, holiday, vacation pay, and a 401k, which allowed this employee to also retire comfortably. All of you have decided to build your career at Sterling, and someday when you will retire, you will not only enjoy the benefits from a 401k, but also the benefits of being part of an employee-owned company owning Sterling stock. So, for the news you all have been waiting for, I am proud to announce that Sterling staffing stock price has increased 
by 22% with a stock price of $12.11. Congratulations to all of you and thank you for con your contribution to the growth of the stock. On the next slide, you can see the history of the sterling stock value. Since the inception of the ESOP in 2013, the stock has grown in value every year, from $2 in 2013 to now $12.11 in 2018. In six years, that is a growth of 506%. So what does the stock value mean to you individually? I have two illustrations that best define this. For example, employee A earns $25 an hour and has current estimated balance of $16,750 in their ESOP portfolio. They have been qualified to receive stock allocations for five years. So this represents a 6.7% increase in total compensation for a total of $53,350 a year. Another example, let's say employee B earns $40 an hour and today has an estimated balance of $21,600 in their ESOP portfolio. They have been part of the ESOP program since 2013 and have received an allocation every year, so a total of six years. This represents 4.5% increase of their total compensation of a total of $83,600. So as we celebrate our accomplishments, I must share that 2018 was a challenging one. With unemployment being at a record low, resulting in shortage of available technical talent, an increase in customers converting Sterling staffing employees to direct hire, increased cost of recruiting, and Sterling's two largest clients reducing the need for additional temporary workforce resulted in a decrease in revenue of $7 million. Despite these obstacles, by July of 2018, we started to see a rebound. This rebound was not experienced early and was not strong to finish the year with an increase in revenue nor a net profit from the previous year. Revenue for 2018 for Sterling Staffing was $36 million and $335,000. Sterling Engineering in 2018 was at $6,590,000. And the combination of both Sterling Staffing and Sterling Engineering for 2018, the revenue number was $42,925,000. So how do we continue to grow in such a competitive market? Since 2017, a strategic plan was put in place to support this effort. We knew we needed to focus on core competencies and focus on growing industries. To achieve our goals, a decision was made to create specific industry business units and to expand our internal management team. Today, these business units continue to grow and strengthen both in talent and customer base. The first vertical industry business unit is transportation, managed by Greg Simutis, followed by energy, managed by Mike Surrey, food and automation, managed by Tom Sandberg, pharmaceutical and medical device, managed by Mark Howard, and in 2018, a new business unit was formed, Electronics Plastics Team, managed by Kevin Bass. The business units are supported by a recruiting team that is managed by Aurelia Sakalinas and the Director of Recruiting, Jane Robinson. Now a quick glimpse of some of the customers that we are currently servicing within these vertical industries. In the transportation, we are servicing the automotive, aerospace, and rail industry. Our largest client is Progress Rail, a Caterpillar company. Currently, we have over 130 employees working in eight different states for Progress Rail. This past year, Progress Rail partnered to assist in centralizing their warehousing logistic operations. Sterling fully staffed their facility in Riverside, Missouri by recruiting over 90 employees. Also, as technology is advancing at a very fast pace, Sterling engaged with Progress Rail to build a software development team in Fort Worth, Texas and LaGrange, Illinois to design intelligent train control technology. In the energy industry, we are servicing both oil, power, and gas sectors. Our largest growing client today within the energy industry is Ian Engineering, an engineering design service firm. 
Currently at Ian Engineering, there are over 35 Sterling employees providing drafting, design, and field support services of utility gas lines to local gas companies within five different states. Within the food industry, Sterling is very active in projects of manufacturers of chocolate, such as Mars, to frozen food manufacturers, such as Pinnacle, to even a local company by the name of Gold Standard Baking, a gourmet bakery for croissants, classic breads, and English muffins. This past year, Sterling recruited a technical workforce to support Gold Standard Baking in the opening of a new facility in Wisconsin to provide croissants to Burger King. Providing design and engineering services to the automation industry has been always part of Sterling's history. For 50 years, Sterling's internal engineering team has been providing services for design and project management of equipment to automation companies. Some sample projects include designing automated equipment for assembly for Whirlpool ovens, engineering and designing of initial stations to prep tubes for assembly for catheters for Eli Lilly, and design and build of machinery for manufacturing asphalt singles for RDI. Now within the pharmaceutical industry, Sterling is very actively supporting projects for some of the largest pharmaceutical and medical device manufacturers in the world, such as AbbVie and Hollister. Today, there are over 20 Sterling employees assigned to projects at AbbVie. Sterling employees are extensively involved in serialization, calibration, and mechanical and electrical design projects. Also, Sterling continues to participate in managing projects for AbV facility moves and expansion. Hollister is a manufacturer of medical products and is also an employee-owned company. Two years ago, Hollister partnered with Sterling for engineering support of their new manufacturing facility in Konas, Lithuania. With Sterling's support this past spring on schedule, Hollister's new manufacturing facility in Lithuania was up and running. Lastly is our newest business unit, Plastics Electronics. They experience growth with companies such as FMI and Omron. At FMI, a provider of silicone, rubber, and thermoplastic components for medical products, Sterling employees manage the merger of two facilities into one larger facility. This resulted in increased production capacity for FMI. At Omron, a manufacturer of electronic components, Sterling engineers have been involved in the design and engineering of new sensors for driveless cars. So how can all of you make a dis difference in the growth of Sterling? First and most important, continue to provide outstanding service. Second, share with us if you know of future needs and opportunities where you are working and please refer your friends, neighbors, acquaintances to come join and work for the Sterling team. As I mentioned earlier, one of our largest challenges we are experiencing as an organization is finding good talent. Sterling has a fantastic referral program. You can earn up to $300 for every referral candidate that is placed by Sterling. Not sure if everyone remembers this from last year, but last year we announced an additional incentive to our referral program. If a Sterling employee referred more than three candidates, and if they were hired to either join the Sterling team or were hired by a Sterling client, your name would be put in a raffle with the opportunity to win up to $1,000. The good news is that we did have over 50 referrals. Last year, Sterling paid out over $10,000 in referral fees. Unfortunately, no one qualified for the three candidate referral placement in one year. So we have decided to run the incentive again for the next 12 months. I do challenge each one of you to participate and not only to have the opportunity to win $1,000, but to contribute even more to the growth of the Sterling ESOP stock. Lastly, how can you make a difference is by following and liking us on social media sites such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Also, do share great comments about working for Sterling on Glassdoor, Google, and Indeed. Before I hand it over to Kathy for the ESOP review, I would like to remind everyone that we have partnered with ADP to process payroll. Everyone should have received a login to access the ADP portal. If you have not received a login, please email Sterling at accounting at sterling-engineering.com. Once again, once you log into ADP, you will have access not only to your paycheck information 
and time off accrual, but also ADP portal will provide sterling updated announcements such as anniversaries and upcoming parties. Information on Sterling's comprehensive benefit package, also important contact information, info on referral program, and also access to all the important documents you need to complete to participate in Sterling's benefit programs such as health, dental, vision insurance, and the HSA savings account program. At this time, I'd like to introduce Kathy Ivancy. Kathy is a co-owner and consultant at Workplace Development, Inc., a firm that specializes in helping ESOP companies communicate their plans. She worked with hundreds of ESOP companies across the country. I'm excited that Kathy can join us today to share an outsider's perspective. We've asked her to provide an overview of our plan and some interpretation on the change in the stock for 2018. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Rama. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, what ESOPs are in general, and I believe they're going to move the keyboard over to me. And the uh, and we're going to review. I I'm not controlling it. <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, what an ESOP is, um, what other employee-owned companies are out there, and how yours works. And for some reason, I'm having some difficulty moving my. Maybe you could just advance the slides for me. We're not moving forward. All right. So uh, um, there are about 7,000 employee-owned companies in the United States that have employee stock ownership plans. And many of them you might uh, recognize. Um, the largest is public supermarkets. Um, those that are bolded on this slide are companies that, um, that have been clients of, uh, of your company. Perhaps some of you have worked for them. If we go to the next slide, I'm going to talk about what an ESOP is, just so that those of you are who are uh, um, not familiar with ESOP, so you know what exactly, what kind of a benefit is this. An ESOP is a specific type of stock ownership plan. It's not an ESPP, and it's not a stock option plan. It is a retirement benefit that owns the stock in Sterling. And in your company, it's a way to provide a smooth transfer of company ownership over time. And, and, and it also is a great way for your company to preserve and continue Sterling's unique service model into the future. And it also provides, in your case, an additional benefit that grows based on your company's performance. If we go to the next slide, you you heard uh, Rama talking about the your your tremendous benefit package. Well, an ESOP, is, in some cases, is a replacement for other kinds of retirement benefits. But in your case, it is an addition to your 401k and that that your rich uh, benefits package. And so. Uh, you know, it really is a larger than what a typical company might provide, which would be just the 401k match. Some companies, in fact, about half of all employers in the United States do not provide any uh, retirement at all. So when you look at your ESOP account, it's going to grow in three ways. One, uh, an annual company paid contribution. Two, amounts that are forfeited by people who uh, do not vest. It takes three full years of three calendar years where you work at least 1,000 hours to vest. And those who leave and do not vest, their shares are forfeited and are uh, reallocated to those of you that remain. And then the value of each share changes every year. So let's go to the next slide here. This is what an ESOP statement looks like. Those of you that have seniors online, you'll know that the top part between the two lines, it describes the number of shares that you have. It has a beginning balance and an ending balance. All the way to the right-hand side, that column is shares, not dollars. And so if we start looking at you know, the, the beginning balance is the number of shares. And then if we look to the right, starting with contributions, the first bubble on the right, the first addition is the company contribution. The next addition, the next line below that, is what 
is has been forfeited by people who are uh, who have left the plan. If you leave, for example, let's say that your project ends and you come back within five years, you're able to come back and continue earning vesting and uh, and and start up where you where you left off. Going around the corner, the next thing I want to point out is that that is tracked on your ESOP account uh, under on this row that says years accredited service. When that line says three or more, then you are 100% vested. That means that after you leave employment, when it's time for you to get your distribution, and there may be a waiting period for a distribution, but when it's time to get your distribution, you have the non-forfeitable right to 100% of what's in your account. Then if you go around to the left-hand corner, down in the, the left corner, there's a bubble that describes what the total value of the account row is about. That is the number of shares that you have times the current market value. And that number, the value of the company stock account, the value of the plan account, the total plan account are going to be the same because you don't have cash in your plan at this time. And then if you are 100% vested, the line right at the bottom is going to be the same number as well because that means 100% of what's in your account is yours to take with you when it's time to get your distribution. Um, and the uh, I, probably the most interesting part, if you get nothing else out of an account, is the market value per share. This is the first line after the top section, and it in that row describes what is the current market value per share. And as Rama mentioned, that is twelve dollars and eleven cents this year. If we go on to the next slide. So one way of looking at uh, this ESOP is that every year in which you work a thousand hours and you are a participant, you earn allocations and you vest in your account after three full years. And participants then have that non-forfeitable right. If you leave, we wanna make sure you know that you can return within five years and continue earning allocations and years of service. We can go on to the next slide. So what does that mean? That means Oh, go on to the next one. <laughs> that means that when it's your time to get your distribution, 100% of what's in your account is yours to take with you. Um, and one way, of, distributions can be very complicated because they're related to your age and the amount in your account. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of an overview but I want you to make sure that when it's time for you to be looking at, at getting a distribution from your ESOP, that you contact um, Sim, uh, Tim Silkitis and make sure that you talk to Tim about that because there are some specific rules that we're not gonna go into here. But keep in mind, they fall into two general categories. If you hit normal retirement, death or disability, in that category, Anybody who falls into that category, what's in their account is automatically 100% vested and they begin getting their annual distribution payments in the year after they leave. Then there's any, any other reason for leaving. In that category, vesting applies and there could be a waiting period before you begin getting the dollars. Just keep in mind, smaller amounts are paid in a lump sum, larger amounts are generally paid in installments over five years. If we could just click. So what affected your 2018 value? There are some things, factors you influence that affected the value, and we'll talk in a minute about factors that you can't influence that affected value. When it comes to valuation, the independent appraisal firm that looks at the stock says, what would somebody pay for a share of stock in this company? And that means that they're looking at what does your performance look like and what does it look like for the future? So all the work that you do to serving clients, understanding your future client needs, retaining great people, sustaining your great reputation, that is a key element in that, what do they think this business's potential is. We also want you to know that a piece of the value is related to, in 2018, debt repayment. And so the, the some of the debt that the company owes outside of the company was repaid that has a positive impact on value. If we just go to the next, click the next in, 
in addition to, to that, there are always going to be things that you don't influence when it comes to an ESOP value. And that is, they look at the environment and they say, what are people willing to pay for for other companies out there? And what are the trends in the sectors that you are serving? And those you can't influence. So in the future, you may see that, you know, that it sometimes uh, is an upside down arrow, it isn't having a positive impact, but you can influence those things on the top. If we can go to the next slide. So stock value in a healthy private company, they're going to look at your uh, company's health, your ability to meet your obligations and repay that debt, the current year and the historical performance, but they really are going to focus on if we can click in your potential for future growth. And I, I just want you to be aware now because next year it's going to be a little bit different in before your company had was repaying debt outside the company. In the future years, meeting business goals is going to become increasingly important because growth and equity isn't going to come from repaying debt. You know, in that in that case, you know, when you were repaying debt, it was a little bit like paying down the mortgage and you got some a little equity boost out of it. So in future years it's going to be about meeting business goals. So if we can go to the next one. So how should you look at this unusual, unique benefit that you have? Look at it this way. Your account isn't at its high point. You know, this, it grows each year that you work at least a thousand hours for sterling, you get a new addition of stock. And, and the more uh, W2 you have, the, the more addition you have. And ESOP value, think of it this way, is on a different track than other retirement savings. In these days of uh, volatility out there in the public markets, those of you that have equities in your 401k or in other investments may be saying, oh my, what's going on? But one of the great things about an ESOP as a complement to your other savings is that it only changes one time a year and it only changes related to sterling's performance. It's not taken those crazy market uh, ups and downs that are happening in the public markets. So the ESOP is a, is a different, a unique wealth building component of your retirement, and it's a component that you don't pay for. You don't have to make contributions out of your pocket in order to get the ESOP. It just comes to you as part of your benefits. So if you wanna look at your particular uh, ESOP statement, if you, you, ha you have gotten uh, your own credentials, if you have a, you're gonna be getting a uh, information, an email that will give you your credentials and you access this website, you'll get a link. But for those of you that do not have your own uh, um, individual uh, statement yet and you don't get your own credentials, um, we've created a, a site where, a John Doe site where you can go in and see the information because there's FAQs, there's uh, prior webinars from years uh, prior and other information that you can see. And you can also see the sample statement for John Doe. So if you uh, are not yet a participant and you haven't gotten your own credentials, please feel free to use the John, this these credentials, John Doe, and the password is John Doe 15. And of course, if you have any questions about uh, about your ESOP, please contact Tim Silkitis. And if you have questions right now, down in the right-hand side of your chat box, or there's a chat box and you can write them in. And if we don't see any coming in there, or we don't, we'll answer those first. We're gonna answer these that are coming in now first. And then we're going to uh, unmute everyone. It's, it may be a little bit noisy, so make sure that you're, when we do that, you're ready to mute your phone if you have background noise where you are. So let me see. Is anyone sending me, got any questions? This is your chance. Okay, here's a question someone has. Let me see here. I I started with Sterling um, May 1st of 2017. Am, am I in the ESOP now? 
And will I have a statement this year? Let me see, is, uh, is Tim on also? Yes, I'm here, Kathy, yes. Okay, so I wanna make sure if I'm answering these questions that I'm, uh, I'm, I have you because you're the one who knows your plan intimately and also knows the practice. Um, so I'll just kind of give the, the, in general, from, you know, I work with hundreds of ESOPs out there, in general, the, in order to become a participant, you have to hit the criteria, the eligibility criteria. And in your case, it's, uh, you have to have worked for, you have to count from your, um, your start date and count a whole 12 months. And if inside that year, you've worked a thousand hours and you're 21 years old, then you enter on the next uh, January 1st or July 1st. But you know, Tim, maybe you wanna talk about this one specifically. So this person started sure. May 1st, yeah. Yeah, most definitely, thank you, Kathy. Uh, yeah, so if you did start on May 1st, uh, 2017, uh, your one year anniversary would have been uh, May 1st, 2018. And as Kathy, Kathy said, if you'd work a thousand hours during that time frame, then you would enter the plan in on uh, July 1st, 2018. So that would be correct. Yes. Yeah, so you you don't get a like a heads up. Hey, you're in. It just happens. Okay, correct. Another. There's a uh, yeah. yeah there, there's a census process that we go through uh, at the end of the year, uh, which is very detailed. And so we go through that just one time a year. That is correct. Okay, here's another question. Can employees who are not currently working for Sterling access the website? Um, uh, I'll, I'll hand this one off to you, Tim. Uh, yes, um, so if you're not currently um, working for Sterling, you can access the website. Uh, if you received an allocation at any time, uh, you would have received a uh, login with your name, and so you can log in that way. And then also, as uh, Kathy presented earlier, you can log in as John Doe with the credentials of, with the password of John Doe uh, 15. Okay. Um, and here's a, uh, this one that we get all the time. I get it all the time. It's the, do employees pay taxes on the value of their ESOP account? And the answer is no, while it's in the uh, account, like a, just like a 401k contribution, you aren't taxed on what's in your account until it comes time to take your distribution of value, which happens after you leave the company. And ESOP distributions fall under the very similar tax rules as a 401k, which means you may be able to roll it over into an IRA to, or defer the taxes, but we encourage you to seek professional tax advice when it comes time to get your distribution because the rules of course can change when it's time for you. Any others? Anybody gonna write in the chat box? Okay, I'm gonna go to the attendees and unmute everyone. So are we all ready for, uh, there's gonna be some noise here. But we wanna make, give you a chance to, to give us your, uh, um, your questions. Hmm says, you have full audio control and may unmute yourself at any time. So you can go in and unmute yourself. Oh, we don't, we don't have to worry about it there. I hear somebody, do you have a question? Hello. Hi, we can hear you. Do you have a question? No, no question. Anybody else, if you have a question, you have to, oh, here, I see somebody. Okay, I'm gonna unmute. Oh, you're self-muted. There's a question here. Okay, okay, here's a question. Uh, is this also eligible for international student employees working under, I'm trying to, so I can read this. What about that one, uh, Tim? I would say um, no if you are a an international student employee unless you are have worked the thousand hours, right? Right. All all the same um, 
um, requirements uh, are for, for everybody. It's not just uh, U.S. citizens only. That is correct. Okay. Um, is there a calculation we can follow to figure out how much we will earn? And I'm going to say, here's what I'm going to say. It can't, it can't, you can't figure it out until after the entire year is done. Here's the reason why, because you need to know what the W-2 is for your, for yourself, for everybody, and for, and then you don't know what the value is. So there are a lot of moving parts and you can't, you cannot guesstimate what it's going to be. All you can look at is what your actual alloc allocation is for that year, because it depends on stock value. So you can't really, you know, do a right. you can't do a good guess. And you can't um, count on the same exact number of shares as you did the last year, uh, even if you made the exact same amount of total compensation, because the total compensation of the group will change up or down. So your percentage will change up or down accordingly. Yes. But you know, generally, it's kind of in the same range. Would you say is it generally in the same range, or is it? As far as the number of, of shares, that is correct. But obviously, yeah. the value is going to change, so that will have a significant impact on your account balance. Okay. Um, so, uh, will the slides be emailed to the registered attendees? Uh, no. But what we are going to do is, you can you you'll be able to access this. Uh, recording on the uh, on the ESOP connection website is that right yes that is correct so, yeah. and it will okay. be yes it will also be on the the John Doe site so if you do not have your own specific username and password uh, you will be able to view it on the John Doe good um, when will the ESOP site be updated with the 2018 data do you have uh, we are we are hoping by uh, tomorrow morning that they'll have that turned on. Okay. Is it also el okay uh, eligible for international? I got that one. Is there a, uh, at what point can I cash out my stock and are there any penalties? Okay, I'm going to give the general answer and then we'll let Tim uh, get a little bit more specific. Um, but I'm guessing he's probably going to want you to talk to him specifically about your situation. Because of the way the rules of the ESOP distribution are designed, they have lots of moving parts. It's going to depend on which of those two categories you fall into. So first of all, it's after you leave employment. Okay. And if you left for because you retired, died, or you were permanently disabled, your payments begin in the year after you leave. If you leave for another reason, there might be a delay, but it really depends on how much you have in the account. So you're going to want to talk to, um, to Tim about your own specific situation. And if you take it as a person who is not 59 and a half and you take the cash, there are penalties if you take the cash and we're talking about taxation and if you roll it over then you can defer your taxation but it is a it's a much more complicated process than that anything you want to add to that tim uh like you said if you do have a specific question uh please send me an email and i'll be able to uh, respond to you at that and also follow up with a phone call yeah too many moving variables for us to to answer that in general Okay, so let me get this straight. This person says, okay, Art, I see you have your, if you have your hand raised, that's good. Let me get this straight. I have to work three years to be eligible for the ESOP. I started this year in March of 2019. That's not true. Here's how it works. You start counting from March 2019 to March 2020. And at that point, if you have worked a thousand hours in that time, then you enter the plan on July 1st of 2020. And at that time, any uh, every year, the December allocations will be made to your account. Then after three full years of doing that, you have the right to take the value with you. Do you want to add anything to that, Tim? 
Uh, the, yeah, the three years would be regarding the vested balance. So that is correct, Kathy. You, you enter the plan after one year and you start to earn allocations. But then after three years of a thousand hours in each calendar year, then you become fully vested. That is correct. And and just to point out that this person who started March of 2019, they will have a thousand hours in the plan year 2019. So by the time they get their actual statement, they will be already two years vested. Yes, that is correct. Yes. Okay, somebody asking about the slides. Um, when will this be updated? Is there a calculation? We are muted. Okay, I see some hands raised. I'm having trouble unmuting. Okay, here's a question, and then I'm gonna then I'll go back and I'll try to unmute people who have their hand raised. Uh, is the thousand-hour work requirement still in effect for an employee who retired in 2019 um, in the at normal retirement age? I, it do, doesn't say that, but it would depend on if you retired at normal retirement age or you're calling it uh, retirement. I think this is one that you probably want to ask Tim offline. Is that right, Tim? Uh, yes, that is correct. If they could yeah. send an email uh, to me, that would be uh, appreciated, and I will respond right away. Because there's too many moving parts in that one. Um, if I decided to retire, why can't I take the whole amount from my ESOP? Well, the I'll give the why, and then uh, and then it may be that you could. You need to talk with Tim about what the situation is. If you decide to retire, the the rules, the why is that the ESOP is designed to uh, to make sure that it protects the company, the remaining participants. So if everybody could call it retirement and quit, that would mean that the company would have to come up with the dollars to fund those. So the reason why you have this kind of, uh, you have to wait a year is twofold. One, if you retire today, you've got W-2 for this year, you have another allocation coming your way if you retire at normal retirement age. Two, you wanna make sure that you got a company that's healthy enough to pay people out. So there are some, uh, some provisions that allowed the company to delay those payments to protect the rest of us that remain, you know. So everybody else who is still in the plan, there's not you know a bunch of people leaving and damaging the business. Um, and the answer to your question of uh, if I decide to retire, why can't I take the, my whole amount from the ESOP? Uh, you're going to want to send an email to Tim because if you, under certain circumstances, uh, with certain amounts, you might be able to in the year after you leave. Okay. Oh, there's a really good question here. Um, who determines the value of the stock? When you have an employee stock ownership plan, you, the company is required to have a trustee and the trustee hires an independent uh, appraiser. And the independent appraiser has to look at Sterling and say, what would somebody pay for a, a share of stock in Sterling? They have to determine that as if they were uh, just an investor at an arm's length transaction. So that's that number, that $12.11 per share that you see, that's where that number comes from. It's an independent valuation. And every year that uh, analysis is done by an independent appraisal firm. Okay, here's a question. If we started August, September of 2018, when would we be allowed to participate in the ESOP? This one is the same thing. You take your hire date. Let's just say it was August 31st of 2018. Go all the way around to August 31st of 2019. And then you would enter the plan on January 1st of 2020. Assuming you are 21 years old and you worked 1,000 hours in that year. And here we got another question. Can you talk about if someone leaves Sterling but becomes, and I'm having trouble reading their whole question. Oh, if someone leaves Sterling, 
but comes back to sterling at a later date, what happens to the balance? This is a really good question. Because of the nature of your business, sometimes people's projects end and then they come back. Well, um, in the way your ESOP is designed, you get to re-enter. If you, if you leave sterling, you are, you know, you're treated as if you left. But if you re-enter within five years before five full breaks in service, five full calendar years, if you come back, you can continue to earn vesting and continue to earn allocations. And so, you know, if you if you have taken your balance, your balance is gone. But if you have not taken your balance, then you pick up where you left off. Okay, let me see if I uh, have some people who I can, um, they have a question that I can unmute. Uh, I'm having trouble uh, unmuting you. It says that you can control yourself now, but it's not allowing me to do that. <laughs> Okay, somebody is unmuted here. This is John, I believe, no, right here. Now we're gonna have to go with the chat box, sorry. not giving you control. Okay, any other questions that you want in the, uh, write them in the question box? Okay. There's a question here. It says, will you update our ESOP account tomorrow or at the end of the year? That's a really good question. The, what, you can, what you'll see when the ESOP accounts are updated, uh, hopefully tomorrow, you know, this week, is you'll see the year end statement for 2018 with this $12.11 and the new allocations for the year 2018. Which, uh, what will happen at the end of the year is they will close the books for 2019 and then begin that process of getting the independent valuation. That takes some number of months. So the reason you're getting your 2018 value now is because you're a private company and you have to get an independent appraisal and it takes some time to do that. That's just part of uh, a closely held ESOP. So in your case uh, here, uh, you will get an update on your ESOP account tomorrow, but keep in mind that's for last year. Around this time next year, you'll see a, uh, the update for 2019. Oh, please list the ESOP login address again. Can we go back? Can you uh, go backwards on the slides, please? Go back to, there we go. Can you see that? Oh, the ESOP login, right there. Any other questions? Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> okay, in the case of someone passing, who would be the beneficiary? Um, well, on I believe on the, the, the website, you can change this, but you will fill out a beneficiary, beneficiary information for your ESOP. Uh, just like any other benefit. Um, and if you want to change that, make sure that you talk to Tim about that. Or uh, Tim, is there a way, there's a way to do it right on the website, right? Uh, yes, that is correct. In the document section um, and on the front page, it'll say uh, complete beneficiary form here. And it's very, very important to do that. Uh, if there's an instance where someone, you know, should pass, and if they're not married or something of that nature, uh, it can be complicated for the money to be released. 
So it's very important if everybody uh, does complete those. This is great. We're getting a lot of good questions. Any others? Okay, here's one. Is the ESOP account exempt each year from taxable income if the individual is at the maximum in their 401k? I believe it is unrelated to your personal, but uh, Tim, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, correct. It's independent of your 401k, so it's a separate benefit, so it's not tied into that. Yes, and so your personal max on the 401k is your personal max, uh, and the ESOP is in addition to that. Really good question, though. <laughs> now we're getting into the weeds. Any others? Okay. Can my allocation ever decrease? For example, if it's 8,000 one year, can it drop to 6,000 the next? Um, I'm going to answer this in the big picture ESOP world. It's stock, and so stock can go up and stock can go down. Um, but keep in mind, your account is growing in two ways, or actually three ways. One, it's getting a new addition to it each year. And two, uh, if it's getting uh, any forfeited amounts of people who have left who are not, are not vested. And three, it's the stock value. So the stock value can go down, but those two other elements of, uh, of what you have in your account is, uh, is you know, is, part of what an ESOP is, which is growing. Now, if you're talking about can your particular allocation in any one year decrease, it might decrease because the company makes a uh, more modest contribution or because of the fact that there's a lot more people that we're spreading out among. But it, it can vary from year to year, but you know the company is, uh, is committed to making uh, contributions and you will always receive the any reallocated amounts from people who have left. So the stock value can go up and down. Ask follow-up question if that if you'd like more on that. Any others? I don't see others coming in. Uh, Kathy, um, you have my email address up here. If there's anybody that um, either can't get through or can't type in the chat box, uh, feel free to send me an email at the tspokitis at sterling-engineering.com. Um, so please, please let me know, um, and, uh, and I will definitely get back to you. Wonderful. Well, on that note, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us uh, today, this afternoon, and we look forward to completing another successful year in 2019. And once again, any questions, feel free to check in with Tim, and um, the information will be available on the ESAP website hopefully tomorrow. Wishing you and your family a wonderful rest of the summer, and um, looking forward to, once again, a successful year with Sterling. Okay, we're going to stop the session now. Thank you.